Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on a special episode today because we are back in Vauxhall. I have lost six kilos since January, but who's counting? Fahan, you lost a bit of weight as well, actually, but no one no cares bit. about that. No, bit. Um, no one cares. No one, no one likes a brag. Israel Adesanya is victorious. Lucas is back from holiday. Lucas, congratulations. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yes. For those of you who don't know, Lucas uh, was paid by <laughs> a middle-aged woman to accompany her in Mauritius for um, what felt like six weeks. Shout out, Barbara. Good old Barbara. How many times did you have to go down on her? Only only twice. Once at the beginning of the holiday, once at the end. You're talking nice. about your mum? No. Oh. No. I thought you said you were go not, down my on mum's not middle aged. Yeah, oh. and she's not gonna he's not gonna go down on his mum. That's disgusting. That's weird. Oh. He went down on Barbara. You're making it weird now, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. For Han Solo is on le reserve level battery again, ladies and gentlemen. So what's gonna happen? Farhan, how are you? I'm okay, man. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen with Farhan today, right? Farhan is fasting because he's got closer to God recently. Yeah. Um, which is great. We support um religion, hit Lucas. Great. We we support religion. All religions. We support all, all religions. All no. Yeah. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the first five minutes. <laughs> Save the wild shit for the last five minutes of the episode where only the incels are listening and they'll agree. So he's on reserve level battery, understandably. Round of applause for, for Han for still coming out today. Well done, for Han. Well done. He, for Han was asleep <laughs> until about 45 minutes ago. That's true. <laughs> if so, this was in Peckham, I never would have got here. Yeah, <laughs> so what's going to happen today, and it's absolutely fine for Han, once the battery does run out, don't say anything, just turn around. Right. <laughs> and just, I'll take it from there, and then Lucas will chime in. And then hopefully Barbara will come in and um, lick both of our nipples. Okay, what are we talking about today? It was a beautiful weekend. Can we do timestamps as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful yeah. weekend. Israel Adesanya yeah. did something that we don't see as often as people might think. Winning a rematch. <gasps> Doesn't really happen as often as people think. Oh. And he done it in style. Yep. What were your initial thoughts? I wanted him to win. Um, I was gassed. Did you believe? I, part of me, I don't know, it's a weird one. When you want someone to win, it's like there's a negative part comes in and it's like, oh, what if he gets caught? <laughs> And yeah. for a second, it looked like he was about to get caught and get finished, but, you know, he pulled it out, man. Uh, I just don't remember being... I can't remember the last time I was that happy after a UFC fight. Yeah. Because I remember how bummed out I was last time. I think everyone was depressed. There was a feel good... I, I felt the same way. Yeah. Because... I Okay, I'm going to be straight up. I thought Pereira was going to win. Yeah. But I'm a massive Adesanya fan, and the only reason I believe that Pereira was going to win is because my rational brain took over and said, yeah. a guy wins four t three times in a row. Yeah. What What's necessarily different? Um, and Izzy, if you ever see this, I'm sorry for um, not believing Yeah, I don't anymore. think I ever picked against him, but I wasn't sure either. But yeah. I just said I wanted Izzy to win. It was fun. Well, when he stopped him, so have you seen it in slow motion? Yeah. So I thought the first punch was... First one, I like, buckled him. Well, what happened was, when I watched it in slow motion, so he covered up, he covered yeah. up, and none of that really landed clean. The, the knee just mitch, uh, missed, the um, the hook yeah. kind of went in between his face and his glove, so it kind of missed his face. Yeah. And then he tapped light with a jab and then came with a right cross. And I thought that done all the damage, right? But what happened was, he hit that and he went down and then he reset. Yeah. So he came back, Pereira came back square, and then Izzy recoiled. And the amount of power he, he, that man generates, right, is incredible. Yeah. People don't give him enough credit, right? And then caught him again, and that was the second punch was what really done the damage. And then the hook on the way down was kind of poetic because what's been the yeah. punch that he struggled with the most with Pereira is a hook. Yeah. So the fact that he got to land um, a hook on the way down, and the hammer fist was, in the words of Jorge Masvidal, super necessary. Yeah. Um, it was beautiful. It was. It's why we love the sport. He said that hammer fist was from the gods. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> and then the bone and arrow thing. Izzy's the type of guy that rehearses <clears throat> stuff like that. Uh, 
I would say that was one of the best celebrations I've ever seen yeah. in my whole life. Yeah. Because he pulled it from his back three times. Yeah. And then he broke the fucking bow at the end. Yeah. Did you yeah, see yeah, him yeah. break the bow? Yeah. <laughs> like, if you were to do that unplanned, you would just yeah. shoot the bow. But this guy, he was restocking. Nah. He planned. Is he the type of guy, right, where he will, like, plan celebrations in training? Plans walkouts. He plans, um, you know, the post fight speech. Definitely planned, like, Taunting his son as well, falling in front of him. That was a bit unnecessary. Nah, that was bro. cool. I rate that. That was <laughs> that was savage. But you know how petty you have yeah. to be, Lucas. You you probably don't know what we're talking about in this moment about the kid. Mm -hmm. um, so Israel Adesanya um, knocked out a guy he's lost to three times before, right? That guy's called Alex Pereira. Yeah. And the first time he the first time he got knocked out by Alex Pereira, Alex Pereira's son, who was like maybe five at the time came in the ring and pretended to get knocked out in front of Izzy <laughs> to take the piss out of yeah. him. So Izzy just knocked out Alex Pereira over the weekend and then decided to go up to his son, who's now 10 or 11, point at him and then lay on the ground, <laughs> mocking his dad who he nearly just killed. Wow, well, savage. Bro. That's a level of pettiness that I respect. Yeah. That the, is cold, isn't it? He's yeah. the king of pettiness, man. But I love, like, who, I would never think to do that. I would like. I would never think to go up to someone's child, like a child, and keep score. It was necessary, though. I can't lie. But yeah, and uh, someone said, which I thought was like, I think it was the Mac Life guy who was saying the anime arc now is that yeah. kid grows up <laughs> <laughs> and then challenges you. Um, like that kid's doing push-ups in his bedroom right now. Yeah, it's true. The the fight. Um, I was surprised because I think Alex. Did you think he? Do you think he won like the first round? I think Alex had a better, this is ironic, he yeah. had a better first round this time yeah. than he did last time. He did, yeah. And what's interesting, this is how good Pereira is, right? Izzy knew those kicks were coming, and Izzy even said this, I prepared for those kicks, I still couldn't get out the way of yeah. them. He's so sneaky. And you don't look at Pereira and go, oh my God, he's super quick. Yeah. Right? It's just, the man has impeccable timing. And sometimes, the kicks might even look slow, but it's, he knows exactly when to throw him. He's seeing stuff that the untrained eye, even some trained eyes, don't see. What's mad is he threw a lot of head kicks and Izzy managed to dodge them all. But yeah. every time he threw them, like my heart just sank. Because yeah. we we just don't know. Like that could like if you just don't get out of the way in time, you're gonna get head kicked to hell. So oh yeah, um, and that's not the type of guy you want to get head. Like watching Pereira on the mitts, on the lead up to his fight. When I was every time I saw Pereira train in my head, I was thinking, "Oh no, <clears throat> he's." But I think he's going to two hundred five next. Um, this is a, so basically a lot of I think a lot of fans want a trilogy. Yeah, I don't think Alex Pereira deserves a rematch in the sense of like, is he only got the rematch because he was a dominant champion? Yeah, Alex Pereira shouldn't get a rematch just because it's one one. But looking at the division. 185 you have to go down to number six to find a guy that Izzy hasn't beat so yeah. either it should be a rematch or it should be Israel versus someone else Drikas Duplessis or Hamza Chemaev they're but gonna do Hamza hopefully it's Hamza but you know I wanna see that yeah so oh my god yeah but first a trilogy yeah do you think a trilogy makes sense or not right now I think no. what I think the better story would be one of them goes up to light heavyweight, yeah. wins a belt, and the other one follows them there That'll and gets a good. title shot. That would be nice. We need a break from it. Yeah. Make it sexy again. Let us let, have let Pereira get some wins. Maybe Pereira becomes a 205 champion. Yeah. And then this story. Then there's a new story now. It's like, oh, but can Izzy knock out a 205 Pereira? Yeah. I will not weight drain Pereira. Oh, that's a good point, mm. actually. Yeah, it creates a new narrative to sell the fight that isn't there at the moment. Um... But Izzy is a, um, what I love about Izzy is the man is unapologetically himself. Yeah. He wore like what looked like a skirt to the weigh-in. Oh, yeah. Which Dog is, a, yeah, which is a bold statement, especially with the type of fans that the UFC can attract. He's unapologetically himself. And then when he wins, he lets everyone know about it. I love, I love Izzy. You know, I love Izzy because I'm an anime guy. Yeah. Got, mm. got the Naruto here. I love how he channels that anime energy and puts it into all of his fights. Yeah. Like if you saw like um, when Bruce Buff is doing the announcement, he's like putting his hands in the air like spirit bomb, getting all the energy from everyone. Mm. And then um, he always references like Rock Lee and shit. 
So I love I love that he just fucking he's himself. He gives us a platform to be nerds and not yeah. feel bad about it. Shout out the incels, ladies and gentlemen. Very important. And he left him frozen like Elsa, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said that the other day for yeah. no reason. What? I just said frozen like Elsa. Yeah. For no reason. And that's good. That's that's he's he's, he's building little lines and stuff. Although, right, when they asked him why are you wearing a dog collar? And he goes, because I'm a dog and <laughs> on Sunday I'm gonna be unleashed. I was like, what? <laughs> what? That's a stretch. He's oh, I love his uh post fight interview uh when he's like, I wish, I hope you guys could feel this happiness yeah. one time in your lives. Can I be honest with you, right? When I got onto my PhD yeah. course, I heard my mum say those exact same words to some random woman on the phone. Is it? Which is cold. <laughs> It's so rude <laughs> to say that to someone. I, I'm not even shit. I, I, I came downstairs and my mom was, who knows who she was talking to. And they were to, I know they were talking about pictures because I, yeah, I hope one day you can feel like this too. <laughs> Which is so patronizing to say to someone. That is harsh. Um, was, that, was that ladies' kids fuck ups or something? I don't even know. Probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about the... Um, the dog collar. I think he needs to check the website that he bought it from because it that looked, looked like a choker. It looked like a BDSM toy. Yeah, it looked like some choker. That's yeah, some, it's kind of sexy. I can't lie, but yeah, um, yeah, that looked like something that um, you drag someone around the bedroom. <laughs> 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 oh, what a guy, bro! Um, he's a very good-looking guy, you know. Is he? Yeah, is he? He's, yeah, he's a good-looking guy. He's everything the UFC want. Yeah, from a from a star. I think I think it's safe to say. We're going to miss this, him when he's gone. I think at this point of time, would you say he's the biggest star that UFC has? That c fights regularly. That fights regularly. Yeah. Yeah, not Connor. Just forget no. that. I think Izzy's the the most uh, popular active fighter. Yeah. Or even active champion. I don't think Izzy Makachev, Leon. He's nah. trendier than John Jones. Yeah, he's trendier than John Jones. Yeah. Um, John Jones is kind of in his legend phase anyway. I think right now... The popular guy is Izzy, and uh, yeah. I think he got more fans this weekend. Just uh, not just because of the insane knockout, but coming back from adversity, taking out a guy that's beaten three times. Um, they built up the story really well. Yeah, because yeah, they don't really need to mention. He don't need to really accept the kickboxing losses. Um, I mean, it's a different sport, you know. I don't know. Well, how do you feel about that? People say it's. Uh, some people say it's one one. Some people say it's free one to Alex. Do you do you uh, do you agree with the free one narrative? Like, because because in that um, in that way of speaking, you have to say that oh, Izzy's gonna have to beat him three more times to catch up. Here's why that, none of that matters in the long term, in yeah. my opinion. The more powerful person in any walk of life gets to write the history. Yeah, Izzy is a far more popular yeah fighter than Pereira, so he will get to control the narrative. Yeah. So if he wants to say, I beat Pereira and never mentioned the losses, yeah, that's how history will perceive it anyway. Yeah, you know, people have short-term memory loss. Yeah, like fundamentally, it's three-one. So like at the raw at the yeah. rawest level, it's three-one. Yeah. However, Izzy gets to control the narrative now, and is him like, <laughs> and we we did say, did he need a knockout? Um, and he did. He looked like yeah. he needed that knockout. Yeah. He looks like he wanted that knockout. He went for, for his it. mindset as well. He went for it, and I think we said he needs the best knockout in the whole. He got know, it. He got it. Yeah. Yeah. He got he the best knockout. Is he really said last goal wins? <laughs> he did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lucas. I know you're not a, a big UFC fan, but here's essentially what happened. Right. A guy had lost the first three fights. Yeah, so that's like the equivalent of being 3 0 down on the playground, and then the cunt shouted, Last goal wins. <laughs> <laughs> Scored a goal and was like, Done, take the ball. And because he control, owns the ball, he took the ball and he went home. Yeah. But Alex looked hurt, man. Like, he looked. Yeah, fucking... I mean, Brazilians, when they lose. They lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they it's, like a, it's like an honor thing in their yeah. culture. Um, Pereira's face looked a little bit wonky. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Like, I think Izzy might have done some. Damage. Maybe, yeah. You know, there's there's a couple of myths um, about Izzy that need to be dispelled now. Mm. So he doesn't have power. That's two people now where he's flatlined. Yeah. Robert Whittaker yeah. and Pereira. And those two guys aren't known for being people you can just flatline. Yeah. So this narrative that he doesn't have power. He's got those. He's got long, powerful arms. Yeah. Like that thing. Like 
when he arches that thing, that's an 82 inch reach, and he's got muscular yeah. arms, and he puts a lot into his punches. He's he's uh, he's got a lot of power, and uh, Alex Pereira just didn't respect that power. Man. No, he um he's just he's kind of throwing wild. He thought he had him, and then got caught, and then. Yeah, got knocked out. I mean, if you picture, let's say you you know those punch things in the like yeah. the, there's those outside and you can measure your power, right? Yeah. Imagine Pereira's face is the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And Izzy's in the like he started here. Yeah. Caught him. Yeah. And his finishing position was there. Yeah. So he punched through his face. Do you, he said um clean. Like obviously he got hurt with those leg kicks mm. and then he got hit with the knee. I don't know if the knee landed, but mm. Um, it was instinct. He looked hurt. He looked hurt, but then he obviously threw that punch, and then afterwards he was break dancing and shit. Do you yeah. think? Do you think he was playing possum a bit? I think he said he was as well <laughs> with the leg thing. A little bit. Yeah. I think he. I, I mean, those leg kicks are gonna. Add. I think those leg kicks did hurt, but I think he was lulling him a bit into yeah. that position, which is masterful. Also, also, I think maybe there's an element of adrenaline. He's just yeah. one, so he got. A lease of life in his leg, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that leg was all bandaged up during the press conference. Yeah, and afterwards, um, Pereira is such a clever fighter. It's, I mean, it's, this takes nothing away from who Pereira is, right? What the problem with that's here's the problem with getting those guys to fight over and over again. If they fight a hundred times, it will probably be 49, 51, 50, 50. Alex might win the next one. Who knows? Exactly, because it's just a, that, at that level of kickboxing, the um, and the power that those two possess, the margin of error is so slim. Yeah. It's just Luke Thomas kind of said it. it's like who fucks up first. So you know, Izzy said he doesn't want. Um, Izzy said, like, yeah, Alex doesn't deserve the rematch. Dana said Alex should go to 205 because he can't make the weight anymore. Yeah. Most of the fans look like they want a rematch, a trilogy. Me, personally, as an Izzy fan, I'm like, bro, just don't do it. Like, just walk away, man. You've you, you got the upper hand. Fight someone else. You're 33. How Give many fights have you got left? You don't want to waste your whole career fighting Alex Pereira. Let's fight, have a, fight let's, someone else. Yeah, let's have, a, let's have a whole reason why. I think the 205 is a good narrative. <laughs> if Pereira yeah. can go there and get success... Who do you think Pereira would fight at 205? He'll probably get a straight title shot. You think straight title shot yeah. with Jamal Hill? Yeah. Pereira's got to be one of the most spoiled UFC fighters of all time. Um, he you could. Can, he gets a title. Like, imagine having five fights in a sport and like, like three of them yeah. being world title fights. I like his chances against Jamal Hill. Um, I'm not sure about Yuri. I'm not sure about Ankalaev either. Jan Blahovic would be a good fight. Anyone who's willing to wrestle him. Yeah. Blahovic, Ankalaev. I mean, Jamal can wrestle. Yeah, but I don't know. Um, I don't know man. Anthony Smith. All of those guys have competent wrestling. Johnny Walker. I think he would flat, he would flatline Johnny but Walker. We we can't be a hundred percent sure that yeah. all it takes is wrestling him to the ground anymore. His his wrestling defense might have improved. There was no yeah. wrestling in this fight. It's true, which yeah, I think I was, a lot of people were surprised by. I was surprised. I thought. I mean, is he? I thought Izzy was going to wrestle. I think a lot of people thought Izzy was going to wrestle. But Izzy looked angry, man. He looked like he wanted to hurt him. Yeah. Have you ever seen his face look like that before? Like fucking angry the whole time. Well, he's been just brewing for four or five months, isn't it? Um, I want to hear Eugene, Eugene Behrman, Izzy's coach, now openly talk about the he mentality. Looks like the, he kind of looks like the Uso brothers. He does a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he well, does, not it? Similar part of the world. Probably, yeah. Um, not similar part of the world, but probably... Isn't Samoa near? I don't know. Where's Samoa? I don't know. Isn't it near there? Fuck it, who cares? <laughs> oh, fuck. Anyway. <laughs> um, we're not getting cancelled for that. It's fine. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear Eugene speak about what the mentality and game plan yeah. was going into that. It will probably go on Aero Hawani show. Or Free Style Bender. Yeah, I'd love to hear him like openly talk about it now because he can. Okay, so... What's uh? What do you think's next for Izzy? They, uh, the biggest fight they can possibly do. Yeah. Which the UFC is in the business of making is Hamza Chimaev. Yeah. At middleweight for the title. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, the, he's not in the rankings. Who cares, bruv? I think Hamza. Yeah. Do we truly no believe really that? Complain. Do we truly believe that Hamza isn't cap worthy and capable of beating people in the top five of the middleweight Look, division? That fight is gonna sell shitload. So I say just do it, and um. It's an interesting fight because I don't know who's going to win. I don't know. Do you have any initial thoughts? 
I think Hamza is gonna. You think Hamza? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Izzy right now because I'm not too sure, but it's a tough one. But I'd love to see that fight. Uh, I'm Hamza. Ask me how the fight goes against Izzy. Um, first of all, um, what do you think of uh, Izzy's performance on the weekend? Brother, brother, this Alex Pereira no wrestling, brother. I grab Alex Pereira, brother. I make him eat Brazilian barbecue while on the floor with me, brother. I drizzle his body with hummus, brother. I put him against with some pita bread, brother. I make halloumi sandwich, brother. What are you going to do to I her? smash everybody! <laughs> everybody in Brazil, I kill everybody! <laughs> ah! What, what are you going to do to Izzy? Who is this Izzy? Brother, I put him on leash, brother. I got four dogs, brother. <laughs> you need more dogs than that to kill me, brother. You're chill, man. You're fasting, bro. I smash everybody, brother. I eat Izzy after Iftar, brother. <laughs> <laughs> brother, Izzy, Izzy with a little bit of hummus, brother. <laughs> Delicious, brother. I kill everybody. Good, I man. smash everybody. Even Lucas, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I eat Lucas, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Uh. Oh. Oh. You done that? Was that it? Uh, <laughs> was that? Nah, 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 uh, <laughs> but is he? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when he runs out of battery, we were just gonna hear him go. <laughs> well, one one thing I obviously I'm I'm hyped for Izzy versus um, Hamza, but UFC Africa is back. Yeah. UFC Africa's back. We got African <laughs> champion again. We got Izzy back in the picture. That's what I'm saying. In a few years' time, maybe next year, South Africa versus Nigeria. Boo! Israel Adesanya versus Drikas Duplessis. It's a good fight. Drikas, you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope Izzy beats the shit out of him, but yeah. it's a good fight on paper, and I think it'll be a good showcase for Izzy to beat the shit out of him. So. Drikas reminds Fuck me. you, you uh, Drikas Duplessis fans. Fuck Drik you guys. Drikas Duplessis reminds me of Zack Ryder from WWE. <laughs> 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 That's a good shout. Yeah. yeah. But no, seriously, uh, fuck those Drickers fans, man. Yeah, you lot are weird, man. Yeah, fuck you guys. You lot are so weird. Do you not see the fucking inconsistency in his message? I'm real African fire. Bruv, you're white. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be very real about it. And listen, right? I'm not saying you can't be white and African. However, what I am saying is a white man from South Africa telling a person from Nigerian heritage that they're not a real African is a little bit tone deaf, isn't it? Yeah. Considering the last 2,000 years of history. Yeah. Lucas, would you agree with that? I would agree. He would agree. Yeah. That's why you got to stop doing that, by the way, Lucas. Doing what? All the other acts on the comedy circuit have been saying that they're um, sick of your racial comments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's I just, I'm just here to speak my truth, man. Um, okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's that speech you gotta free it. It's very important. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. It's like it's mad how Adesanya he just wiped out the whole division. Like you have to go. You literally have to go down to number six. Drickers do perceive, and then after that, it's like Sean Strickland, Derek Brunson. <laughs> Why'd you look so disgusted? Sean Strickland, like, uh, Derek bro, Brunson. Oh, it's just didn't Derek Brunson retire? What's he doing in the ring? I remember, but he beat Derek Brunson anyway. But Stru yeah. Sean Strickland, like, come on, no one cares. Um, yeah, it's like there's just nothing. That division's kind of finished. To Some, be honest, in the words of Israel, the son, someone's got to show him something. Yeah, and you at you this point, do up. you have to do hums up. That's the only one that makes sense. Or Alex again. We'll all be coming in our pants. You know when uh, before a fight starts yeah. and the UFC commentator said, I've got goosebumps. Yeah. That's a goosebumps fight. Yeah. We'll all be waking up five in the morning, waiting to see how good, because we know how good Izzy is at yeah. this point. Yeah. We will find out how good Hamza is. Imagine Hamza goes in there and just grabs him. Better. I grab him. Better. I put him in. I think he will grab him, but I'm not sure. Imagine he eats him alive. Imagine he makes it look like Kevin Holland. I don't think so. But imagine he did. I don't think so. Bro, I don't want to believe that. Imagine he did. <laughs> that would, then what? Yeah. Do we just do we just call it a day? We just say he's the greatest of all time. Yeah, there's the he's like, the greatest of all time then. But I don't think he will because if you look at the Burns fight, he didn't really do that to Burns. Is yeah. Is his takedown defense isn't too bad, and I think um, I think Hamza won't have a game plan. He'll just come in. To smash 
And if it doesn't happen, he'll gas out by the fifth round, so or the fourth round even. So um, let me ask you a question: yeah. Does Habib beat Izzy? No. You don't think so? No. Come on, man. You. How good was Habib? We don't know. We'll never know. He was good, of course, but he's not going to beat Izzy, man. Come on. Why not? Izzy's like Izzy could be two twenty on the thing. Khabib's like. 200 yeah 20 pounds i don't think he's gonna beat him nah i don't know man maybe oh that'd be fun <clears throat> could be probably would have beaten usman or he probably would have beaten um leon edwards or kobe but to go to middleweight and say he's gonna be um habib is he i don't know habib left us with some unanswered questions but good for him <clears throat> um all right should we move on to um oh yeah actually um ufc um ufc uh, yeah, UFC is coming back to London in July. Oh. So what's interesting is it's probably going to be Leon Edwards versus um, Kobe Covington, mm. and obviously Burns won on Saturday, so it'd be mm. good to have Burns versus Bilal Muhammad mm. have a little mini Co-main. little mini uh, s- uh, tournament there. Get this guy in the fucking <clears throat> matchmakers room. It has That's to be good. done, man. Let's do it. Yeah. Because because um, Burns said after he beat Masvidal, I want to be the alternate. Why would you? Why be the alternate? Book yourself a fight, get yeah. that number one contender spot. I believe he beats Bilal. And um do you think? Yeah. Burns. Burns. Yeah. You think he beats Bilal? Yeah. I take Burns in that. I don't know. I am gonna go with Bilal. I think Burns is the next. I guy. think Bilal's on his way, man. I don't know. Um But what's interesting <clears> is Bilal was calling out Usman. He said he wanted Usman over Shavka Rachmanov. Which makes sense. He's a Usman's obviously a wounded animal right now. Yeah. And it's, he's, you know, he's ranked number one still. So um, it makes sense for Bilal to do that. But, you know, it's still a tough fight. Bilal's profile has gone up a lot in recent months. It has, yeah. He's been working hard to get his profile up. He did well to do it on Saturday by wearing that Kobe shirt. That definitely yeah. got him some Yeah, fans. some attention. Got mentioned in the press yeah. conference. Yeah. See, exactly. He's doing the right shit. He just needs to get on the mic and... Kobe didn't come to the fight, did he? Nah. Yeah. So he can't. He needs to stop calling himself the king of Florida when you can't even show up to a fight in king Florida. Of Miami. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But what, what do you think of the uh, Burns Masvidal fight? I mean, it was fine. He beat. He won every round, in my opinion. Yeah. The first round was pretty close. Uh, Masvidal looked good for that first round. Yeah. Got taken down at the end, and then round two and three just looks like he kind of gave up mentally. It just looked like he wasn't, his heart wasn't in it. He didn't look like he trained that hard for it. It looks no. like he just wanted one last payday or something. He looked a, a shell of himself. Yeah. He looked knackered in the second yeah. round. Yeah. Like, and what's annoying is he kept getting hit really bad in the third round and he kept doing this shit. Yeah. Like, don't do that shit when you're getting fucking beaten the shit out of him. Well, I understand why he does that. Yeah. Because I think in his head he's thinking, I need to make this a 50 <laughs> 50. So he was trying to catch him. He was trying to get him to yeah. get into a shootout with him in the I hope know, that he'll but catch he him. He just kept getting hit over and yeah. over. <laughs> Like Burns, it was a very comfortable night for Burns. Yeah. I mean, as Burns, it was good, but I feel like Burns could have put on more of a showcase. But <coughs> Burns seemed to have a qu- quite a bit <coughs> of, sorry, had a quite a bit of respect for too much respect, yeah, yeah, yeah. for his striking. Whereas I think he could have put on the brakes. Three rounds is weird, though, isn't it? Because you could accidentally lose a three round fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> if you just you know start slow. For I mean, reason. yeah, like you could have given Masvidal the first round. The third round, um, Masvidal started well, <coughs> and then Burns took over. So it could have been, but then, yeah, Burns just cemented that third round. So. Did you hear what um, Burns said about uh, Jorge Masvidal putting oil on his body, lotioning? Oh, I heard about that, yeah. yeah. I mean, clever if he did. Yeah, Why fair not? enough. It's cheating, but it's the last fight, who cares? Yeah. Fuck it. Go out on a cheat, Amir Khan style. Well done, Amir Khan. Yeah. Big up Amir. Um, but yeah, uh, congrats to Masvidal. Uh, good career, man. Well retired. done, mate. Well done, man. Well done, well done. Jorge. I mean, he has, a, he has an amazing career, man. Uh, because he started in like fucking Kimbo Slice street fighting and Wearing shit. Wearing three quarter lengths. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, his career, like, he was good fire for such a long time. But obviously, the Darren Till one put him on the map. And then the Ben Askren one send him to the moon and, and then, then Nate Diaz Nate Diaz it was a good run and you know like obviously he lost to Usman but he gave Usman like uh, his first like kind of good big pay-per-view rival so obviously Kobe as well but yeah he's like yeah he's done good things for the welterweight division man 
That was the Prime Street Jesus years. Yeah, that was good, man. It was a fun time to be a part of. Jorge Masvidal. Not a part, but to watch. Jorge <laughs> Masvidal was showing his lifestyle a lot on the yeah. embedded and stuff. Yeah, it's cool. And it made me um, realize he's just trying to live like Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> like he's just bought... walks around Miami. Like yeah. Everyone's like, here you go, sir. Like, like he's bought a traditional Cuban style <laughs> looking house in Miami. Wherever he goes, obviously. I liked his haircut, lady. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice fun. haircut. Yeah, it was a good haircut. Round of applause for the haircut lady. Good job. It's a shame we didn't win him the fight, but that's okay. Um, I'm just glad he didn't get finished. That yeah, I mean, he, he's a he's a crafty veteran like that. He's one of those guys where it's going to be... um, It's hard to finish a guy like that. Okay. I'll tell you what. They should have done... Um, oh, my finger's fucked. Well, what Masvidal fuck? versus Kevin there? Holland. No, Masvidal versus Conor McGregor. Oh, maybe. That would have been good. Yeah, because George is a shell of himself. McGregor might have been able to win, yeah, this, win this and one. Yeah, some momentum. Yeah. And then McGregor will be like, I beat Jorge. Now I need a world title. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else is there? Rob Font, Yanez. Oh, that was shocking. I didn't. I thought Yanez would have won that. But mm. Rob Font just fucking fucked him up, man. He jabbed, a lot, a lot jabbed of jabs. the shit out of him. Yeah. Those jabs were like... Pistols. Oh, pistols, yeah. yeah like, clean. Just, bro. Adrian Yanez just looked shocked, man. He didn't look. He didn't know what to do. Von looked like a strong. St they didn't look like they're in the same weight class. Nah, well. nah. But Rob Von, Von's good, man. You can't sleep on the guy. No, uh, he looked just bigger than him. Yeah. You know, great hands, very quick. Yeah. That um, bantamweight division is a problem, man. Is good, man. That's like everyone there is a killer. Yeah, like Rob Font. You could do Rob Font versus Peter Yan next. You could do Rob Font versus. Yeah. San Hague? No, San Hagen's on his way up. San Hagen deserves better. Speaking of bantamweight, have you seen uh, Henry Cejudo's cut under his eye? He's got stitches. No. Oh, is it? He's got a cut here and it's got stitches in it. Oh, and the fight fuck. is in less than a month. Oh. That's bad, bro. That's it. That's very bad. Oh, we got... Um, oh, wait. Hold on. I'll just talk about one more fight. Um, Kevin Holland looked okay. Like, he didn't <laughs> look... Like, I don't know what he's... I don't know what his problem is. He's such a talented guy. Um, I love Kevin <clears throat> Holland as a character. Talented guy, he just looked a bit kind of slow, but then he got a good knockout in the end. So I thought he looked him. good throughout. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Ponzinibbio looked terrible. Ponzinibbio uh, was landing good leg kicks, though. Ponzinibbio, he just looks like... I think Ponzinibbio's on PEDs, by the way. He's got Probably. one of those PED bodies. Um, what I love about Holland is how random he is. Just like in the middle of the fight, nobody, absolutely nobody. Do you smell weed? <laughs> In the middle of... Did you hear that? <laughs> he asked him, like, do you smell weed in the middle of a fight? Was there one point where Ponzinibbio did something with his leg and then Kevin Holland said, you're right, bro? Yeah. Yeah, Fuck. and it was like, you're intending to knock him out at some point. <laughs> Why are you asking him if he's okay? Um, oh, so actually this weekend... Uh, and then he... Sorry to interrupt. And then he moved to a girl. Oh, did he? At the end of the fight in yeah. the crowd. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about that card. Rosa oh, Jr. Uh, yeah. Disappointing. He's young. He's young. He'll figure He's it out. He's a bubba. Uh, yeah. Kelvin Gastelum looked good. Um, good for I mean, him. It was a good fight. Uh, it was, you know, back and forth fight. Um, yeah, fight of the night. Well done, Kelvin. Yeah, well you done. silly boy. Uh, but yeah, actually, this weekend is um, Holloway versus Arnold Allen. Oh, come on, Arnold. I like Arnold's chances, you know. I like Arnold's chances too, but I don't know. You can never count out Max Holloway. Arnold's got to get his respect early. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to get peppered up. It's actually quite close odds. Max is the favorite. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to call that one, man. You'd like, have to say Max is the favorite just through history. You who know? are you going to go with? I'm going to go Max. But go Max. I want Arnold Allen to win. It's British. But you have to say Max is the favorite. Yeah, Max yeah. deserves to be favorite. Just because I'm biased UK pre, I'm going to go with Arnold Allen. Yeah. And I'm just going based off momentum and... How many five-round fights has Arnold Allen had? I don't know. Probably none. none. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just going to go with the fact that maybe Max is uh, past it now. But every time we think that, he comes back and yeah. fucks someone up. So hopefully that guy's not Arnold Allen. Max is in a weird spot. Because it looks like Arnold Allen would be the type of guy that Max would land 500 punches on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to go with Arnold anyway. Max is in a weird spot in his career. Because what? Another title shot? Yeah. Volk has to fuck off. I mean, if Yair beats Volk, then yeah, then Max will yeah, be back. Yeah, yeah, then that's that's the best thing that can happen for his career. 
Yeah. Um, but, but then, then Volk will get an immediate rematch <laughs> because he's been a dominant champ. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, let's let's talk about this immediate rematch thing. It's become what, a bit of a culture now, hasn't so it? So, do you think, uh, like, how many title defenses should a, ham- a champion have before, like, yeah, what? How many title defenses qualify for you to have an immediate rematch four. as a champion if you lose if you lose your belt? Four is four. When you, when yeah. you've defended your title three four times, yeah, you've been pretty. You've been there for a while. Yeah. Four, because that would tell me you've been doing four if you've had two fights a year. You've yeah. been champ for like two years. Yeah, Volkanovski's got four. Yeah. Usman had five, so Usman deserved it. Izzy had like six. I felt like Usman had more than five. Maybe, but Usman, yeah. uh, Izzy had like six, so he deserved it. Yeah. Amanda had shitload, so she deserved, yeah. deserved it. I don't think Pena deserved it. No, I think, Pena, I think that's just lack of options. Yeah. Because she's been so dominant for so long. To have that UFC 289 Pena versus um, Nunes 3 as the main event for Canada is kind of sad for Canada, man. I can't yeah. lie. That's peak on Canada. Right. After all these years. I mean, like, what's going ha- to be different? I mean, I think... Nothing. It's, just I- gonna get, it's gonna be easier this time. Yeah. Um, Pena's a very attractive woman, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a stunner. Well done to her. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but... Um, Obviously, it's another fight this weekend. Uh, With whom? Uh, <laughs> your 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 bit uh, your um, <laughs> your daddy. Who's my daddy? Walter Davis. Oh God! <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Don't talk about it. Yeah. All right, but um, Javante Davis. Anyway, I think he's fighting uh, Ryan Garcia. You're a boxing guy. Do you? Oh, it's not. No, uh, it's in two weeks. Let's not talk about it. I think Javante Davis probably catches him. Okay, fine. They can both hurt each other, though, but I'm going Javante in that one. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, what else, what we, else got? we got? Just trying to check if it's the Bellator. Um, no Bellator. No, we just got uh, Holloway versus... Uh, we got some fight announcements. If you had to put a percentage on the... What percentage of comedians can you beat up? Male comedians? Probably not many. What percentile do you reckon you're in? Top... Five percent, really? Yeah, that's bold. Yeah, I'm a big guy, man. He's young as well. There's a lot of oldies. Yeah, oh, this is for your oldies. I'd love to fucking slap them out. <laughs> um, what percentile do you think you are in, Lucas? Comedians, I, I could be in top 20 percent, really? Yeah, 10, nice. 20. I can't remember the one percent. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm up there, mate. Just smacking mouths. Um, <laughs> no, 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 that's. 0.1%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just me and... <laughs> Ori Styler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just wrestling it out. What are uh, UFC... UFC... Yeah, man. I don't know anything, to be honest. Do you reckon you could take Ed in a fight? <laughs> I don't think you can, you know. Probably not. No, I reckon Ed will have you. Um, do you reckon you could take Roman? Um, Probably, yeah. Really? Nah. He's a five nah. I, think, I think Roman's a... He's a five fight. You forget that. The man's got strength. Yeah. I think Roman's a fucking... He's a secretly a serial killer and he'll fuck up anyone. <laughs> could yeah. be, yeah. Could be, could That's be. True. What's your, what's your, what, how do you like your chance against Roman? Roman? No way. Yeah? He'd destroy me. I should probably put up photos of all these comedians yeah. for context <laughs> uh, for people who listen to me. I could take Roman, I reckon. Yeah? I think I could. Because I've done boxing since I was a kid, which I think gives me a, a big advantage. That's true. Um, yeah, I think that's, that gives you an advantage, I'd say. Wow, 288 is looking like a good card, man. <clears throat> yeah. Charles Oliveira Woo! versus Benil Darius. Woo! Sterling Cejudo, obviously. Ooh. Um, Bryce Mitchell's on the card. Nice. Tron Gracie's back. No! What's he being up to? Uh-huh. Didn't he fuck off to my tide because he got lit up by Cub Swanson? Maybe, yeah. Did I just say he he fucked Maybe, off to uh, my tide? Thailand, yeah. Yeah. I think he's been living in Thailand. Oh, I don't know. Imagine he's come back with like masterful Thai boxing now on top of his jiu-jitsu. Yeah. When was his last fight? That was years ago, man. I can't remember now. Joking. Cub Swanson probably. I think so. Jack Hermanson versus Brendan Allen. Nice and boring. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Man, Nunes. Has Jack Manson ever been in an entertaining fight? Probably not. No. 
Volcanossi was Yair Rodriguez, um, 290. That's it in July. Ugh. Oh, that's International Fight Week. You'd have to go with Volkanovski for that. You'd have to go with Volkanovski. I'd like to see Yair pull it off, but um, you never know. Uh, we got Bo Nichols back on that card versus Treshawn Gore. Treshawn Gore won the Ultimate Fighter, I think. Did you see Bo Nickel was in the crowd? No, he didn't. So, so Did you what? see Bo Nickel was in the... Um, was in the was in the crowd um, for Adesanya yeah. Pereira, and there was a camera on him. And when he knocked him out, he went like that. And if Izzy and Bo Nickel ever fight, they're going to show that in every embedded, oh, probably, yeah. every countdown. You know, they're going to play some put some dramatic music over it. Dum 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 dum, and like zoom in, zoom in on his eyes. Oh, we should probably talk about WWE and the UFC merger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, we should probably talk about that briefly um, before you run out of battery. You've done very well, though. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you've really soldiered through. I think it's because you've brought your anime things to power you through, to give you your energy. Yeah, yeah. Me up. I think it's a good thing. I mean, there's more money for both the yeah, sports yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And people say, oh, wh how much crossover? I like the idea of crossovers. I think it'll be fun, entertaining. I don't think we'll see crossovers, like, too soon, but... I think it's the way Dana said. He said, like, guys who have that skill, they can go over there. Yeah. And they could do it if they want. I'm never going to stop them. Yeah. Um, in terms of wrestlers coming over to UFC, again, do they have the f accolades? I mean, CM Punk didn't. No. But I think... Brock Lesnar did. Brock Lesnar did, yeah. Brock Lesnar is a different case. Um, yeah, if anyone has the wrestling background, why not? Yeah. So that'd be pretty cool. A couple of guys do. Um, There's that gu young guy who's training to be a wrestler, Gabe Stevenson. Gabe Stevenson. Yeah. He, he wants to go WWE. Yeah, and if he does, then the door is open for him to also go to the oh. UFC at some point. Yeah. Easier. Now, uh, with the acquisition, they are now a $20 billion <laughs> company. Yeah. Did you see Vince McMahon's face? No. In the interview? No. He looks weird, man. He's got some weird mustache now, isn't mustache, it? Mustache, and his face looks all Botoxed up. He looks like a, a criminal now. Yeah. Do you think? Um, do you think uh, the fan bases are the same though? WWE. And yeah, I think Dana White underestimated. I think there is a lot of crossover between WWE fans <laughs> and well done, WWE fans and UFC fans. Yeah. I think there is a lot of crossover, especially I think people start as WWE fans. That's how I started. And yeah. mature into UFC fans. Yeah. They grow into like that's what happened with me. That's what happened with you. Yeah. That's I think generally that's the pattern. It's the right of passage, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's great because now Endeavor as a company can take someone from literally three years old, yeah. four years old, when they're old enough to start watching WWE, and keep them as a fan. That's a good point. Assets yeah. in their company for their entire lives. It's like Disney has a product for every age group. It's true, yeah. You know? Because Disney, they have obviously Disney, but they also have Discovery, Star, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of scary you think about that. Yeah, well, now they're one of the biggest sports holding companies in the world, if not the biggest. Yeah, it makes sense that a company would own both. That's a mad power, yeah. man. Mad power. Um, I just hope they... They're up there yeah. with like Fenway Sports now who own Liverpool and baseball teams oh. and stuff. Do you ever watch Entourage, the show? No. Do you know what it's about? No. It's about um, a movie star and his agent is um, called Ari Gold. Right. But he's based on Ari Emanuel. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's basically just a very violent angry yeah. Jew though. <laughs> that's the character yeah but he's one of the best TV characters of all time really what's the show it's a good show I should watch it okay I think we're done thank you so much for coming um, to this episode uh, follow us on Instagram follow the punchline poddy if you've come this far what are you incel good Lucas incel yes God bless you, Lucas. Um, and remember, your mum never loved you. Goodbye. <laughs>